Hi everyone, I will talk about our method for regularizing RNNs called noising. This is joint work with Rajesh Ranganath, Yan Altosar, and my advisor David Bly. Recurrent neural networks are very powerful models for sequential data. They process a sequence one observation at a time, where at each time step the observation is uh, projected to a low dimensional space using a recurrent hidden state. And this hidden state is then mapped to the data space to predict the next observation. And all the weights that are involved in these projections are shared across time steps. And so these principles of recurrence and parameter sharing are what make RNNs very powerful at processing sequential data. The problem is that RNNs tend to have very high capacity and they memorize data very easily. We say they overfit. But fortunately, we have some intuition on what happens when they do overfit. And what happens is that the hidden states depend very heavily on each other. They co-adapt. And one natural way to then mitigate overfitting is to inject noise into the hidden states of the RNN. We did that for a language modeling benchmark, a language modeling uh, task on the benchmark dataset Pantry Bank. And what we report here is the perplexity across iterations of the deterministic RNN and the RNN regularized with noise. The performance of the deterministic RNN is shown, is shown in the blackers and the performance of the noise injected RNN is shown in the yellow curves. What we notice is that for the deterministic RNN, the training perplexity keeps going down, so the RNN is still learning, but the performance on the validation set starts going up after only five iterations over the data, after only five epochs. And so that's a sign of overfitting, and this is not the case for the noise-injected RNN, as shown in the yellow curve, whose performance keeps improving across iterations. And one natural question now is, uh, is to ask how this noise injection is done. Well, in its most general form, noise injection is done, noise injection in the hidden states of the RNN is done by sampling random noise epsilon t at each time step and then computing the hidden state by not only conditioning on the previous hidden state in the previous observation, but also by conditioning on the sampled noise. This noisy hidden state can then be used to perform prediction of the next observation as usual. One instance, one very popular instance of noise injection is dropout. I'm showing here the equations of dropout used in an LSTM and the way it works is that you take your previous observation and multiply it with some Bernoulli noise the Bernoulli mask, and then you also take your previous hidden state and multiply it with some Bernoulli mask, and then you compute the gates of your LSTM and use those gates to compute your uh, noisy hidden state. So the noise here intervenes only at the gate level. The method we propose noise in relies on the notion of unbiased noise injection. We define two flavors of unbiasedness. We have strong unbiasedness and weak unbiasedness. Strong unbiasedness is defined as having the conditional expectation of the hidden state given the previous hidden state to be exactly the hidden state of the underlying RNN you're regularizing. Weak unbiasedness says that the conditional expectation of the hidden state given the previous hidden state is the transition function of the underlying RNN evaluated at the previous hidden state. These two flavors of unbiasedness, the whole unbiasedness criterion, ensures that the underlying RNN is preserved. The reason why we want that is we want to regularize an RNN while keeping its properties intact. And the way you achieve, for example, strong unbiasedness is to injecting the noise to inject the noise at the final layer and the way you achieve weak unbiasedness is to use multiplicative or additive noise so you will just have your transition function and multiply by by the random noise epsilon t if it was if you want to use additive noise then you would replace this Adamar product with with 
addition. In the sense we define unbiasedness, dropout appears to be biased. Dropout does not satisfy weak unbiasedness or strong unbiasedness. So we can think of dropout actually as a new class of recurrent models, and that's what we we will do in our experiments. I will show results on when we compare noise in with dropout and and have better performance than just using dropout. Um, the objective optimized by noising is simply the expected log likelihood under the noise. And so this is a summation across time sets of the expectation under the noise of the log likelihood, conditional under noisy hidden state. This is a trivial Jensen low bound under log marginal likelihood. It is amenable to backpropagation for time. It, ha it has lower computational cost than dropout. And one interesting interpretation of it is that at each time step, you are averaging the predictions of multiple RNNs. And this is known in the literature as ensemble method. And it has, it is known to be, uh, uh, to have a regularization effect. In noising, you can use any noise distribution. The only restriction on the noise is that you need to have, the user needs to have control over the noise level. So you need to have control over the variance of your noise. And because there are certain distributions that have bounded variants, such as the Bernoulli and the beta, we propose a rescaling method for multiple noise distributions. You can see that in the paper. One very interesting aspect of noising is that under strong unbiasedness, you can actually write its objective as, you can write its loss as, the loss function of the deterministic RNN, the underlying RNN you're regularizing, and a regularization term. This regularization term <coughs> penalizes hidden units that are sensitive to noise, so it enforces robustness. You can think of this regularization term as basically a summation, a summation of the variances of the hidden states, of the hidden units, where the hidden states are rescaled by this matrix B that takes the output matrix of the underlying RNN and you're regularizing and multiply it by some term involving the Fisher information matrix of the RNN model. And so in our experiments, we tried the language modeling task, we tried the Pentry Bank and the Wikitex data set, which are two benchmark data sets for language modeling, and we used two baselines. We used Two baselines, we used deterministic LSTM and we used the dropout LSTM. In our settings, we try to keep them as simple as possible so that we can compare the effectiveness of noise in and dropout as regularizers. And so we performed controlled experiments. We did weight tying where you match the embedding matrix, input embedding matrix to the output prediction matrix. And we grid searched on the noise variance. There were no further tricks performed in these for these results. Here I show the results on the pantry bank, and the way you interpret this is that in the top, on the left, on the left figure on top, I show the perplexity for the deterministic LSTM. The lower the better, and I show in the subsequent rows I show the perplexity of noising for different noise distribution, and you can see that they all perform better than the deterministic LSTM. But more interestingly, they perform better than the LSTM regularized with dropout. And this shows you the importance of having this unbiasedness assumption on when regularizing these neural networks. One other interesting experiment we run is consider dropout as a new model class for recurrent, mod recurrent neural networks and um, add noise in on top of it. And we show that when you do that, you have better performance than dropout alone. We recover the same results in Wikitex 2. And so I hope that you will start using noising. It is an alternative dropout to, it is, it is an alternative to dropout um, that is built on the notion of unbiased noise injection. It is simple and improves the performance of RNNs and it enforces robustness. That's how it regularizes. 
I hope you step by poster number 53 and my friend Francisco Ruiz will answer your questions. I unfortunately couldn't make it to Stockholm because my visa didn't come on time. Thank you for your attention. Bye.